My name is Graham Saul. I'm the Executive Director of Climate Action Network Canada. Climate Action Network Canada is a coalition of Canadian organizations working together on climate change. It includes almost all of the major environmental organizations working on climate change policy, as well as key constituencies from uh, like the Assembly of First Nations, the Canadian Labour Congress, the United Church of Canada, and international development organizations like Oxfam. So it's kind of the tent where our Canadian organizations get together to debate and coordinate their work around climate change. How important is carbon capture and storage to uh, the whole challenge of reducing greenhouse gas emissions? Well, that's what we need to figure out, right? Uh, Climate Action Network Canada comes from the perspective that what we need to do is we need to get the most bang for our buck. We need to find the most cost-effective ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions as fast as possible. And if carbon capture and storage turns out to be the technology that, or one of the technologies that's going to be able to get us there, then that's great and we should start deploying it. Inevitably, it's only going to be one of many technologies that we need to deploy, one of many approaches or wedges that we need to pursue. So it's still to be determined whether or not carbon capture and storage is going to turn out to be the most cost-effective way of bringing down greenhouse gas emissions. But right now, in terms of the suite of options we have, it's certainly one of the wedges that we need to be looking at and understanding. Graham, uh, the IPCC suggests that carbon capture and storage could help reduce anywhere from 15 to 55 percent of the world's greenhouse gas emissions by 2100. Um, is that, do you, where do you fit in that wide spectrum? Well, the operational word is could, right? The uh, carbon capture and storage could play a, a major role in reducing greenhouse gas emissions if a wide variety of, of issues are addressed. We will need to determine issues like long-term liability. Who's going to, if we put this stuff in the ground, who's going to take care of it for hundreds of years to make sure it's not leaking and to make sure that, uh, and, and to cover those costs? Do we have the technology? Is the technology really there? And if it's not, what's it going to cost to get us there? How are we going to put in place the pipeline infrastructure that's going to move the carbon around to get it under the ground? There's a lot of outstanding questions that need to be addressed. And if we can address those successfully, then yes, carbon capture and storage could be a technology that can reduce greenhouse gas emissions quickly. But what we can't do is allow ourselves to become obsessed with any one particular technology. What we have to do is find the most cost-effective, long-term solutions to the question of climate change. And if it turns out that carbon capture and storage is one of those, then that's great and we should do what we can to make it happen because there's an absolutely urgent need for Canada to begin to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions. So uh, how would you picture carbon capture and storage, assuming it works and, and we can use it, uh, how does it fit in as a strategically in, the, in managing climate change? Is it a transitionary uh, technology? Is it a way to exploit every last drop of oil and, and, and oil sands? What's its role? If if we, can, if we can deal with the wide range of issues that still need to be addressed before we can reasonably say that carbon capture and storage should be rolled out in a large way, if we can deal with those issues, then I see it more as a stopgap in terms of the short term uh, dealing with de bringing down greenhouse gas emissions from existing facilities and facilities that are being built now while we orchestrate what is the long-term goal of a clean energy revolution in Canada and around the world. We cannot see the burning and sequestration of fossil fuels as our long-term goal. Our long-term goal is to design an energy infrastructure that is both capable of meeting our needs and capable of um, delivering the greenhouse gas emissions that, that we need. We need to find a way to make truly renewable technologies work and that should be our number one priority. So carbon capture and storage for, for Climate Action Network fits in as something that maybe we may need to roll out in, in the short term, but we don't want to lock ourselves into an assumption that we're going to be relying on the dirty energy that we've been relying on for the rest of our lives. We need to look towards a new vision of a clean energy revolution in Canada and around the world. And really quickly, uh, what does that look like? if? carbon capture and storage is a stopgap. What does that future look like past carbon capture and storage? What's the future that you want? First and most importantly, dramatic improvements in energy efficiency. The fact is we're wasting a lot of energy that we don't need to waste and we can, we can save energy um, and, and end up reducing our total demand. And then it comes to rolling out the kinds of long-term technology that we know we need, making improvements in leaps in solar energy, rolling out wind, uh, Alberta could be a could be a Saudi Arabia of wind and and similarly in the prairies as well. 
um, micro hydro and other, and other forms of technology that, uh, that are actually going to be substitutes for the fossil fuels rather than, um, rather than mechanisms for coping with the fact that we're currently reliant on them. So what do you think it's going to take to get CCS Pass being a demonstration sport? Because one can best describe it as a demonstration sport right now. First of all, it's going to take a me meaningful price on carbon pollution. We need to embrace the idea that the, that the market is currently not sending the appropriate signals. Carbon is, and greenhouse gas pollution has a cost to society that is currently not internalized in the cost that people are paying or companies are paying. So we need to put a price on, on carbon greenhouse gas pollution and that's going to drive the technology and innovation that we need. So the first thing is we need a meaningful price on carbon, a meaningful price on greenhouse gas pollution and then we need to start looking at some of the regulatory obstacles to, to bring CCS into place if in fact CCS is the most effective way to get the greenhouse gas reductions. So Graham, what do you think it looks like uh for Canada right now? I mean, some people have referred to Canada as a laggard when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, so wh what are our prospects? There's no doubt about it that right now Canada isn't doing enough. And in many ways, Canada has never done enough. Canada has made a series of commitments to the international community and then failed to live up to those, to those commitments. But we're at a moment right now where we need, over the next 10 years, the world needs to, to, bring, to begin to bring greenhouse gas emissions down in a meaningful way, plateau in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, and then by 2020, those emissions need to start falling dramatically. Canada needs to be setting targets of reducing greenhouse gas emissions well below 1990 levels by 2020, and right now we're barely aiming for 1990 levels. So the government of Canada is not currently setting the bar high enough if, what can, if we're going to do our fair share. And Canada needs to do its fair share because this is a truly global problem and we need all countries moving in the same direction to make it happen. What's the best mechanism for putting a price on carbon? You said a lot of this hinges on getting a good price on carbon. What's the best way to do that? Uh, there's a variety of ways to put, to put a price on carbon. One is just a carbon tax, and that may be in many ways the most administratively simple way to do it. Another one is a cap and trade system, where you basically put a cap on the amount of uh, greenhouse gas pollution that an industry can produce, and you force it to trade within that cap with other industries, and by doing so, you indirectly create a price on carbon. So it's, it's, there's not necessarily one policy solution to getting a price on carbon. What we're probably ultimately going to need is a combination between cap and trade system and some sort of carbon tax. The question is really how high does that price have to be in order to stimulate the degree of investment that we need. And um, so I'm hoping that what we see over time is some sort of combination so that we're using the appropriate mechanism at the appropriate time. But we definitely, the polluter is paying. And, um, and, and that is in turn driving the kinds of greenhouse gas reductions that we need. Graham, thank you very much. Thank you.